Hi everyone, this is our lecture on chikungunya virus, so let's get started. To get a clinical perspective, let's look at a quick flash case. Let's say a 36-year-old female presents with fever, joint pain, headache, and a rash. Let's see how she could have gotten this, what other symptoms she may have, and compare it to similar viruses. Our learning objectives are to recognize chikungunya virus and its mode of transmission, describe the clinical presentation of chikungunya virus, and to differentiate between dengue virus and chikungunya virus. Chikungunya virus is an alpha virus member of the togavirus family. And let's stop right there. What can you remember about togaviruses? Are they DNA or RNA viruses? Yes, they are RNA viruses. Great. Now, are togaviruses single-stranded or double-stranded? I think I heard you say single-stranded, which is great. Actually, all of the RNA viruses are single-stranded, except for, can you remember which one? Well, if you're thinking Rio virus is the only double-stranded RNA virus, then that's great. What else can I ask? Oh, are togaviruses positive sense or negative sense? If you said positive sense, then good job. Now that we've covered those nitty gritty details, can you recall what other diseases are caused by togaviruses? Great, if you're thinking of rubella, one of our torch infections, as seen here. Can you think of some of its clinical manifestations? As a hint, it's very similar to our clinical flash case just a minute ago. A patient can present with fever, joint pain, and a rash. But rubella also has postauricular and other lymphadenopathy and, if congenital, can have sensory neural deafness, cataracts, and a patent ductus arteriosus. Anyway, back to togavirus. It can also cause eastern equine encephalitis and western equine encephalitis. Chikungunya virus is transmitted by the Aedes mosquito. The Aedes mosquito? Doesn't that sound familiar? Does it look familiar? It's actually the culprit for a number of viruses. Can you name any others? Well, Aedes also transmits dengue virus, yellow fever virus, and Zika virus. Do you know what virus family those are all a part of? Yep, those are all flaviviruses. Now, here we have a map of current or previous transmission of chikungunya virus. If you are familiar with the dengue virus areas of transmission, the map for chikungunya virus, while still concentrated in tropical regions like dengue virus, is a bit more widespread, especially in the Americas. It reaches more of North and South America than dengue, but it's still very similar. Okay, now we know about how it's classified, how we can get it, and where, let's talk about how a patient would present when they're actually infected. So, chikungunya virus is a systemic infection, and it does produce an inflammatory polyarthritis that can become chronic. So it's not just joint pain, it's a polyarthritis, so it involves multiple joints, like the hands and knees pictured here, but it's also inflammatory. Now don't forget your very basics of inflammation from general pathology and what that means. Can you recall any characteristics? Sometimes they're more fun to remember in Latin. Rubor, dolor, calor, two more, and functiolasia, or redness, pain, heat, swelling, and loss of function. So, we do see some edema, or swelling, or two more, in this first image of a hand, and in the middle image, we do see some redness, or rubor, which could possibly have some heat to it, so more calor. Well, let's keep going. Other symptoms include high fever, so 
more calor or heat, a maculopapular rash like we see in the last image on the right, headache, and lymphadenopathy. Now, unlike dengue virus, which can have bleeding, hemorrhagic manifestations are uncommon in chikungunya virus. We can diagnose chikungunya virus with reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, or RT-PCR, or serology. At the current time, there is no antiviral therapy and there is no vaccine for chikungunya virus, which is why it's important to have public health campaigns for mosquito control in communities where it is prevalent and to protect yourself and your home, like using repellent, wearing long sleeve shirts and long pants, installing or repairing window and door screens, and keeping doors closed and using mosquito nets. Okay, let's do a quick flash quiz. What are the symptoms of chikungunya virus? Great, it's arthritis, fever, rash, headache, and lymphadenopathy. These are all symptoms of chikungunya. So let's return to our flash case. This 36-year-old female with fever, joint pain, headache, and a rash very possibly could have chikungunya virus. It'd be helpful to probe and find out if her joint pain has any accompanying inflammation, if her rash is maculopapular, and if she's been exposed to any mosquitoes. Okay, so what's the bottom line? Chikungunya virus is a mosquito-borne viral illness transmitted by the Aedes mosquito. Its clinical presentation can include polyarthritis, fever, maculopapular rash, headache, and lymphadenopathy. And it presents similarly to dengue virus, but typically does not have hemorrhagic manifestations. Well, that's all I have for you here. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and it'll give you the opportunity to submit a comment if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks for joining me. Study hard.